Hey everybody, this is King Kong Knights 100, and today I wanted to make a video kicking off a new mini series on the channel where I rank anything kaiju related. Movies, fight scenes, characters, games, all of it. Top 10s or 5s or just huge lists all around, whatever you want to call it. And what better way to start off than with the best fights we have from the MonsterVerse? This is all going to stem from my personal opinion, which are fights that I like the most. I'm including all MonsterVerse fights, no matter how big or small they are. We're gonna start off from negative to positive. I just want you to know that. A quick note, I'm also gonna be including the fights from the graphic novels. So this includes Godzilla Awakening, Skull Island The Birth of Kong, Godzilla Aftershock, Kingdom Kong, and Godzilla Dominion. We're covering everything we have so far from those novels and the four MonsterVerse films. Enough babble, let's dive right in. Now I just want to give you guys a quick heads up. If you're sick and tired of hearing me babble about Godzilla King of the Monsters and you're already aware of my opinion on the film, then I highly recommend just skipping over to the next chapter of the video as I'm going to get a bit heated here in this one. And I know these points are starting to become repetitive, but the reason I have to bring up King of the Monsters is because that's the MonsterVerse film and it's necessary that the battles in that film are on this list. So yeah, I'm going to babble for a couple minutes on King of the Monsters and if you don't want to see that, just skip right ahead to the next chapter. Alright, let's go over the worst battles in the series so far, in my opinion. So let's kick off the list with the battles that, in my opinion, are the absolute worst that these films have to offer. Number 26, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Round 2, Mexico, from Godzilla King of the Monsters. The first fight to kick off the list is between Godzilla and King Ghidorah in Mexico. Now this fight right here is severely, extremely overrated in my opinion. A lot of the people who enjoy this movie say this is one of the best fights in the film, and to that I ask, why? You cannot see shit. The visuals are god awful, the ugly murky green and grey color palette is honestly disgusting. The choreography is weak and King Ghidorah gets completely bitched underwater. Even though monsters like Nino Prime and Kong have shown that they actually fare better underwater than the supposed devil incarnate himself, Ghidorah still gets decimated. So it was too one-sided, the visuals were horrifically bad, the choreography was lame, the humans were dumbasses which only served for a cliche plot convenience in saving Ghidorah and killing Godzilla. This fight is shit. Also forgot to mention all the cutting away. Worst fight in the MonsterVerse? Oh yeah. Number 25, Rodan vs King Ghidorah. This is another fight that is extremely overrated. The visuals are complete shit as well. The choreography is complete shit. Uh, these two monsters tackle each other mid-air, they spin around for like 10 seconds, and then Ghidorah beams Rodan out of the sky. You'd expect an epic aerial battle between King Ghidorah and Rodan. Something creative like Rodan hiding within the clouds, dodging beams left and right, King Ghidorah using his three heads to locate and extract Rodan, or Rodan performing an ambush attacks mid-air before eventually falling to Ghidorah. No, the two just spin mid-air and Rodan gets taken out like a bitch. This fight is also filled with cutaways. Without all the cutaways, it was only 15 seconds long. I'm serious. This fight is another terrible one, and honestly, it tied with the previous underwater battle we just discussed. It is just absolutely terrible. Thanks, Mike. Number 24, Mothra vs. Rodan. Mothra vs. Rodan is another awful fight. The choreography is about as bad as you'd expect. We already got a taste of how bad it would be between Rodan and King Ghidorah, but between Mothra and Rodan, their fight is also just as bad. I mean, it's slightly better in that you can somewhat make shit out, especially towards the end, but it's still relatively awful. The visuals are still murky, and the only time they really are shown fighting is the first shot. Human cut, and then they fight in the background with the lame-ass spinning shit, and then from here on out, they just fight in the background. We get this lovely shot of just pure shit splashed onto the screen. And then later on, we pause the main fight between Godzilla and Ghidorah to focus on Ronan and Mothra. No, like they literally pause what they're doing. They stare each other down for the whole scene while Mothra and Rodan fight. Because in the next shot, after the fight between Mothra and Rodan is over, Godzilla and Ghidorah are standing in the same positions as they were when they stopped fighting. <laughs> like, I mean, it's bullshit. People will say, oh, well, in the novel, they fight off screen. Bullshit. If they do fight off screen, convey that to me in the movie. So back to Mothra and Rodan. Just when we're about to get the fight we want to see between these two monsters for more than 4 seconds straight, it's already the end of the battle. And since this is really where the fight begins, I guess, they only trade like 2 blows, even if you want to count that first one. And that's it, then Mothra kills herself. Mothra vs Rodan is a terrible fight, and I see no reason people enjoy this fight, I really don't. The two spin midair and they fight in the background until the last couple seconds. There's just a bunch of shit splotched onto the screen. It's absolute chaos, and it's just ugly. It's not even good chaos, it's bad chaos, bad VFX, bad choreography, bad, bad, bad. This fight sucks. Number 23, Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, Antarctica. I hesitate to even call this a fight. It's written out and rendered extremely poorly. So, for, what I mean by that is, firstly, the writing. 
This is our introduction to the villain, King Ghidorah. He's supposed to be almighty and powerful, but when the fight starts, he gets destroyed in hand-to-hand -hand combat against Godzilla. How is he menacing at that point? He isn't able to overpower Godzilla. He uses his beams when he realizes he doesn't have shit on Godzilla in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So much for the largest and heaviest titan unable to use his strength in battle, right? So constant cutaways yet again, shitty weather effects and visuals, dreadful fight choreography, and of course the antagonist retreats the fight. This ties with Mothra vs Rodan for me, it's just a terribly made fight. They're both equally bad in my opinion. Number 22, Godzilla vs Shinomura, any and all of their fights, from Godzilla Awakening. In the first legendary graphic novel, we see Godzilla fight a new monster called the Shinomura. Kinda like a mix of Destroya and Hedora. It's a cool monster and all, but my god, the story accompanying the fights are shit right off the bat. But we're here to talk about the fights, not the story. The actual artwork is seriously ugly. The artwork is really, really unappealing to the eye. Now on top of that, the fights are lame and the Shinomura always retreats. It gets very stale and boring, like probably midway through, and they retreat like five or six times. Godzilla doesn't even beat it at the end, the humans do. And these fights are just one of the worst in terms of the comics and graphic novels. I honestly, I really think that the graphics and the illustrations are seriously awful, and that's mainly part of the reason why this fight is so bad, is not only is it badly written, it's terribly rendered, it looks awful. And the writing, again, it's really, really shitty writing. is cool, but I wish we got to see it in a better light, in a better fashion. 21, Godzilla vs. Muto Prime, rounds 1 through 4, Godzilla Aftershock. Now the reason I place this battle so high in terms of poorness is because these battles are not good. First of all, they're all really short, so I had to bunch them into one category, which is fine since I feel the same for all of them anyways. One huge reason I don't like these battles is because I don't like the artwork. There's a lot of tracings done which copy stills from the actual films, some that you can even point out. Now I mean the artist for the Kong comics, Zid, has done this too, and that would be okay if there was some spin of originality on it, but these are just full on tracings. No adequate shading done, no visually colorful image that's appealing to the eye. The art itself doesn't even look nice, it looks too rough and too coarse. Godzilla Dominion is illustrated by the same guy and it is by far an improvement, as Aftershock looks unshaded and very rough. That's what I mean when I say it's extremely hard to look at and the illustrations can look really goofy at times. The battles also suffer from being badly written as all the others do, as Muto Prime retreats three initial encounters like a chicken shit bitch needing to power up in order to defeat Godzilla. At this point, you can kind of sense the pattern. It's extremely repetitive and it's lame. This is why I think the Muto Prime fights are overrated as well. So to sum up, bad artwork, badly written, and badly choreographed. Number 20, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Boston. Godzilla King of the Monsters. So the main event for Godzilla King of the Monsters is undoubtedly the final fight between Godzilla and King Ghidorah. This is the fight we all paid to see, and to this day, I stand by saying that this is the most overrated battle in all of Godzilla's movies. It's still the best of the worst in my opinion, but that isn't really saying much. It's bad because the visual effects are terrible. They're really ugly to look at at times. The lighting is bad, it looks extremely spotty, and the choreography is god awful. Ghidorah constantly retreats and gets bulldozed throughout this film, which is why this final battle suffers. You'd expect this is where the gloves are off and Ghidorah holds his own. Nope. He gets decimated all the way through and needs a power up to actually stand a chance. I don't care if Godzilla is powered up in Boston, or if it's his domain in Mexico, Ghidorah got whooped the entire film. He deserved to be a badass, getting saved like a bitch and powering up like a bitch is not badass, it's fucking lame. The fight moves were also uncreative and uninspired, and the entire battle was just an echo chamber of unoriginality and prediction. Everyone knows Godzilla will save the day. No one gets worried for him because they know Godzilla is going to hit his low point, but then gets saved again somehow or some way. It didn't really try to subvert expectations or make something new and original. It was written as the most basic, bare-bones formula of a fight, and I think it's incredibly overrated. So at this point, we've basically knocked out all the fights from Godzilla King of the Monsters, and for good reason. So now we're going to redirect our focus onto the better films and stories the Monsterverse has to offer. Now from this point on, the fights we're going to cover become shorter, but they're still pretty goddamn sweet. Welcome to the short yet sweet section of battles. So number 19, we got a couple different small battles here. So for these battles, I wouldn't really count Godzilla vs. the male Muto in Hawaii as it's only for a couple seconds, but if I had to place it somewhere, it'd be here in number 19 considering how cool it was seeing footage of Godzilla and the male Muto as if they were real kaiju. It's a forgettable fight, of course, but I don't think it deserves to be put in the awful category, as it's just fine. Not great, but fine. The build up to it is amazing, but the cutaway is disgraceful. Despite that, it does have some redeeming qualities such as looking awesome when shot in a found footage style, and it also serves the purpose of the story in building up to the final fight. 
in Godzilla King of the Monsters, we already know what Godzilla is. There's no point in cutting away to our bland characters. While this film does that, this is still our first full reveal of Godzilla and the other monster throughout the MonsterVerse in this series. So the cutaway makes more sense than it does in King of the Monsters. That's why I would place Godzilla vs. the Male Meter from Godzilla 2014 in this category. Now I'd also jumble up Kong killing the Death Jackals and the Siren Jaw in Birth of Kong, as those battles were also extremely short, we rarely saw the titular monster, but it still served the same purpose of teasing the monsters. The reason it worked in Kong's case, even though we already saw him in the film, is because we were hyped to see how much larger Kong has grown. That's what the comic was really building up towards. So yeah, not much to say for these battles other than that, you know, they're really small, they tease the monsters, and they serve the story well regarding that purpose. And they're just fine. They're bland, but they're fine. They have forgivable cutaways because they work to tease the monster, unlike King of the Monsters. If I had to place another few battles here, it would be Godzilla vs. the Military for those couple seconds in Godzilla vs. Kong, Godzilla vs. the Male Muto in the beginning of their second fight, and the reason I say this is because I do love the CGI in that scene and the build up to that scene as well. And I guess if you want to call this a fight, Godzilla on the Golden Gate Bridge in 2014. It wasn't much of a fight, but it was still just kind of there. And I'd also place the Mother Long Legs and Skull Crawler battles from Kong Skull Island here as well. Number 18, Kong vs. the Mother Long Legs from the graphic novel Skull Island The Birth of Kong. This fight is from the graphic novel Skull Island The Birth of Kong. I place this battle at number 18 because while the battle is relatively short and only like two or three pages, it's still awesomely illustrated. It's really low because the newer graphic novels and films just have way cooler battles, but it's really awesome seeing Kong dispatch these monsters. Kong is fighting very, very small spiders who aren't really menacing due to their size, and it doesn't seem like there's many snakes in the battle, but hey, the artwork is really well done, which is a huge plus compared to Awakening and Aftershock, and these monsters aren't the highlight of the comic, or they aren't the opponents we're building up towards. We aren't building up towards seeing these monsters be Kong's opponents, their battle just kinda happens, and they aren't advertised as tough monsters, which makes this forgivable. The other two novels advertise the Muto Prime and the Shinomura as strong and tough monsters who Godzilla would need to find a way to defeat. Yet they retreat three times at least and like four to five times at most. Five, six, I don't even know at this point. And those battles also suffered from terrible illustrations. This one does not. So that's why I place it higher. It's nicely detailed, looks awesome, and it isn't really underwhelming considering it isn't the primary focus and hype point of the entire series. Number 17, Godzilla vs. That Weird Fish Kaiju. Godzilla Dominion. First of all, I just want to say, I know that there's some kind of name for this uh, fish kaiju and I completely forgot it and I know it was confirmed somewhere, it's something like Gigaton or something. But yeah, so first of all, we've entered the point now where the illustrations are way better in terms of the graphic novels. So this battle is extremely short, but it is beautifully illustrated. It has an awesome original kaiju, a surprisingly powerful one that makes Godzilla bleed, but what makes this battle great for me is seeing the finisher. Godzilla dispatches this Titan by straight up ripping out its spine. It is so brutal, and yeah, while it's short, it's still very very well illustrated, and it looks super awesome. Number 16, Kong vs. the Baby Skull Crawlers, Kong Skull Island. So taking a break from the comics for a second, one fight I think is awesome is the battle between Kong and the Baby Skull Crawlers in Kong Skull Island. It's only a couple seconds, but we see Kong is a very fast and powerful fighter in the scene. We kind of get a, a new glimpse of his fighting style. The Skullcrawler reveal preceding it is really cool. It was really freaky seeing this new monster to people who didn't watch the actual trailers or anything. And I like how Kong senses the Skullcrawler behind him. So this battle overall, it's really, really cool. Again, it's a tad forgettable and it's short, which is why I placed it so low, but it's a decent one. It's one of the neater fights in the series. Number 15, Kong vs. the Icarus Tiger, the Psycho Vultures, and Meyer Squid, Kingdom Kong. Now, in number 16 comes three battles from the prequel comic, Kingdom Kong. I bunched these all together because they're all really cool. They occur relatively close within one another, and they're so well illustrated. You see, Kingdom Kong is amazing because not only are the human characters decent, but the illustrations are just the best that the graphic novels bring to the table. So it's really cool. The art is awesome. The battle between Kong and the Icarus Tiger, or the Spirit Tiger, whatever you want to call it, is awesome. Kong kills the Icarus Tiger in a badass way via a neck snap. But it isn't like just a neck snap. He grabs this thing's head with one hand and just pulls his neck back while crushing it. Like, it's so gruesome. He also fights off Psycho Vultures and uses their own weapons against them by grabbing a nearby tree while they zap it. He turns it into like this flaming tree, which he uses to swat at them as if they, it was like a baseball bat. And it's really interesting seeing how large he's grown, considering the Meyer Squid was larger than he was in 1973. 
and it now completely fits in his hand. And I bunched these all together because, again, not only do they appear within like a page or two from each other, but they're also extremely appealing to the eye. Seeing Kong with the fire stick was just so fucking cool. It was really, really cool. I mean, the artwork was beautiful, hands down. We also get a look at Kong's sadness when the Skur Buffalo ends up dying because he accidentally stepped on it. So that was really neat to see as well. Number 14, the Kong species versus the Skullcrawler armies. Skull Island, the birth of Kong. This is an awesome battle I forget about, but seeing the Kongs go extinct and how the Kongs defeated the Skullcrawlers at one point, yet Kong's parents eventually get taken is surprisingly sad. We see more of Kong's origins and that Kong was essentially born into battle, which really adds a lot to his character as we see what his motivations are against these Skullcrawlers. The illustrations, of course, are amazing as it's Zid who's the artist for all the Kong graphic novels. The set piece was incredible and seeing these armies of Skullcrawlers show up to kill Kong's parents were scary as hell and I love it. Number 13, Behemoth vs. Amulek as Godzilla mediates, Godzilla Dominion. Now this fight is awesome to me for a couple of reasons. First off, my boy Behemoth is back and he looks rad as hell, but we also get a new monster named Amulek, or Amhaluk, Amulek, I'm gonna call him Amulek. And I know I'm, <laughs> I'm aware I pronounced the monster's names pretty weird, like Muto and Skyla instead of Scylla or Amulek instead of probably Amhaluk. But um, <laughs> not only is Amulek a badass and freaky monster, but it's really interesting seeing Godzilla settle a fight between two of the Titans under him. Seeing him play the role of the mediator is interesting in that, you know, it exudes a much more of like a kingly status than it does if he isn't present. There is one weird still where I can't figure out if Behemoth has his neck snapped 180 degrees while Amulek drags him, but he seems fine after so I'm gonna assume it's a goof on the illustrator's part. But hey, that's all good because the artwork is amazing and this fight is great. Number 12, Godzilla vs Tiamat, Godzilla Dominion. Another fight from Godzilla Dominion that I love is the fight between Tiamat and Godzilla. Tiamat is this new sea serpent, mermaid-esque titan, and while I do think Behemoth and Amulek are way cooler looking, the reason I placed this fight over Behemoth vs Amulek is because a lot more happens in this fight. Tiamat actually challenges Godzilla and gives him a tough fight underwater, and it is such a hardcore fight that it eventually makes its way into the Hollow Earth. It's awesome. Seeing Godzilla at a disadvantage and knowing that he needs to find his way out and take the battle to land is just really, really cool to see. It's neat seeing how he thinks against an opponent who has the upper hand. This battle is fine, but there are just others that are way more entertaining in my own personal opinion, which is why I placed it at number 12 on my list. Number 11, Kong vs. the Meyer Squid, Kong Skull Island. Kong vs. the Meyer Squid isn't much of a battle as it's more of like a gag, but one of its strongest points is that the visual effects are really, really good. Kong struggles with this thing for a bit, but he ends up eating it. And I think this is one of those gag moments people always come back to every now and then, and it's honestly an entertaining scene. I place it this high mainly due to rewatch and entertainment value. Like, <laughs> it's just funny. It's a really great scene. The visual effects are amazing. Number 10, Mecha Godzilla vs. the Skullcrawler, Godzilla vs. Kong. Now you can see we're starting to enter film territory. Mecha Godzilla vs. the Skullcrawler. This is a fight that people do kind of forget about, but it still happened, and it still had really, really cool visuals. I love how Mecha Godzilla looks. I love how the Skullcrawler looks. Like how creative Mecha Godzilla's kill on the Skullcrawler was. It served as a really, really badass reveal. It's short, but it's a great scene nonetheless. Number nine, Kong vs. the Warbat, Godzilla vs. Kong. And finally, to wrap up the short battles, in number nine comes Kong vs. the Warbat. My one gripe with this battle is Kong gets saved from the Warbats because he gets too cocky and he pounds his chest. If he's going up against Godzilla, he should be able to beat a couple Warbats, no problem. These Warbats are huge, but again, Kong shouldn't have a problem with these guys. He's going up against the big G himself. But regardless, the visuals are really, really nice. This scene and the Mecha Godzilla scene have amazing sound design. I especially noticed the Godzilla Atari trilogy sound effect in it. Kong dispatches them in an awesome way, and he ends up eating the head of the last one. It's really gruesome, and it's again, it's awesome. The Warbats are really, really cool monsters, and I think I personally enjoy this battle a bit more than Mecha Godzilla vs. Skullcrawler one. It's got amazing details and an awesome color palette. Those two scenes serve different purposes though, and they're both inherently different, which is why I don't hold certain points like color palette or fight choreography over their heads. It all really comes down to personal preference, and I prefer seeing Kong kill the Warbats rather than Mechagodzilla kill the Skullcrawler. But again, both are awesome battles nonetheless. And finally, we enter the section in which we discuss the best fights of the MonsterVerse. Number 8, Godzilla vs Skyla, Godzilla Dominion. This is one of the more entertaining fights to see, in my opinion. This is the first battle we're presented with in Godzilla Dominion, 
After the Titans have all awoken, Skyla is one of the monsters whose hunger gets the best of her. Their battle has a really unique vibe to it that really reminds me of the originality that the Godzilla Rulers of Earth comics had. It's in daylight and they're near the ocean, it's a clear blue sky. I really enjoy the atmosphere of this battle, and they're just small things that make this such a cool battle to watch play out on page. Seeing Godzilla bleeding from Skyla, uh, this spider crab-like monster with massively large pincers for legs, was really cool. Skyla not going down with one hit was also a nice change of pace. And this is the first time we actually get to understand Godzilla and his intentions as to why he defends the humans here. It seems Skyla would feed off of a mini bomb or a nuke, and just seeing how he handles her makes for an awesome battle. And the illustrations, oh, the illustrations in this comic are such an improvement over Awakening and Aftershock, leaving both of them in the dust. I hope from now on the artist for this gets better at illustrating, or that Zid starts to illustrate the graphic novels, because by god does the progress from the last two Godzilla graphic novels really show. So Godzilla vs Skyla, awesome, unique, and original battle with an amazing color palette and atmosphere. Number 7, Kong vs the Helicopter Fleet from Kong Skull Island. So Kong vs the Sky Devil Fleet was so awesome to see. Right off the bat, we need to acknowledge that seeing monsters take on the military is incredible. Now seeing Kong actually destroy these helicopters while taking seismic bombs and napalm weaponry to the face was great. It establishes that this isn't the same King Kong who has the tragic story where he dies at the end. This is a new incarnation of Kong similar to the ones we see in the Toho universe and the, the animated universes. This is a kaiju brawling Kong. This is his kaiju story, not his classic story. Now with that said, I do have some gripes with this battle. I wish Kong was more durable and that he didn't bleed to the helicopter rotor. I wish he took more bombs and missiles to his face and body. I would have wanted to see Kong be heavier and around a couple thousand tons, but that's just the fault of Kong Skull Island, not really this battle. But this scene is so spectacularly done. I love this scene. The visual effects? On point. The soundtrack? On point. It's got some questionable acting, like Brie Larson doing her scared face, but hey, this is still a solid scene all around. It's great. I also want to quickly mention Godzilla Dominion featuring Godzilla punishing humans. I love it, a video on that should have come out already, but if you want to consider that a fight, then I would place it here as well because it's got amazing visuals and still, it's technically a battle, and it's also in line with Monster vs. Man, which the Kong Skull Island battle is as well, so it's great to see. Number 6, Godzilla vs. the Mutos Final Fight, Godzilla 2014. Now, another one of the best battles is the final battle of the first film, Godzilla 2014. This battle has some of the best CGI you will ever see. Every shot has such attention to care and detail, it's amazing. And no complaining about that darkness issue, this has since been fixed with the 4K release of the film. This final fight is amazing. There are so many cool moments, like when Godzilla appears through the smoke in the beginning as his silhouette is lit up by lightning, which isn't overused like in the later films. The Muto getting tackled into the building from the human perspective, there are just so many I can recall. I really love how there are actual jaw-dropping set pieces just in the final battle alone. Godzilla's atomic breath reveal, Godzilla's kill in the male Muto, and of course, the kiss of death. It hits all the notes so well. Its only issue, I see, is the constant cutting away to humans. It isn't as frequent as it is in King of the Monsters, but it still is an issue and I hold that against the film, hence why it's placed so low. But the visual effects and the sense of scale and wonder and awe and the soundtrack, it's all so meticulously well done and that is why I consider it one of the best fights in all of the MonsterVerse and Godzilla films. Number 5, Kong vs. Ramorak, Kong Skull Island. Kong vs. Ramorak is the final fight we see in Kong Skull Island. A lot of people throw this fight and Godzilla 2014's final fight into the air as a toss up of which one is better and I mainly believe that this fight is better. Now don't get me wrong, everything I said about Godzilla 2014 stands. The fights were great, the finishes were awesome, the visuals were great. The final fight of this film, however, has a lot better choreography as it seems much more vicious and dirty compared to Godzilla 2014's battle. The visual effects are on par, if not better than in 2014. I like that the battle is in the early morning daytime where it's gloomy, but it gets a bit brighter towards the end. Now Kong and Ramorak go at it in this one. I don't like that Kong isn't as vicious as other incarnations are, or that he isn't as much of like a brute as others were, and that he got saved in this fight, at least like twice or three times, but I do like that their final battle is seriously intense and that Kong's finisher is badass. I do like Godzilla's finisher way more and thought that this one was underwhelming compared to the Kiss of Death, but I'd still place it above 2014 mainly because there is less cutting to humans in this fight, the visuals are extremely strong, and even the music is decent. So Kong vs. Ramorak comes in at number 5. Number 4, Kong vs. Kamazot's Kingdom Kong. 
Now, at number four comes a graphic novel battle, Kong vs. Kamzaz. Now, I understand some of you may be surprised as this is absolutely a personal preference, but right now, I am just completely starstruck with the final battle for Kingdom Kong. A lot of you may be like, why the hell would he place that over like the other fights? Well, again, it's just a personal reason here, but I absolutely love the color palette of this fight. I'm completely riveted by the Titan Kamzaz, and I think he serves as the perfect opponent against Kong. I don't like that his weakness is light, or that their final battle is a little bit on the short side, but Kamazots is still really goddamn fierce and strong. He's able to lift Kong, who's probably around 70 to 100,000 tons, into the air and drop him with his tail and with his old body. And remember, Kamazots is taking the same blows from a Kong who can send a 164,000 ton Godzilla flying, so you know he's tanky as hell. Another thing is that I just love the overall color scheme and the atmosphere and the artwork that the final battle has. The artwork, oh my god, this artwork is amazing. This belongs in a museum, man, I'm telling you. Kong has a tough battle here, but it's really entertaining to see. And I wish Kamazots wasn't distracted by Audrey, but hey, I like that it didn't look like Kamazots would have won and that she prevented the finishing blow. And also, I don't like DC movies, but I put on the extended theme called Flight from the Man of Steel soundtrack, and dude, it was fucking crazy. It made my viewing experience 10 times better. Like, Kong's ears bleeding from Kamazots' sonic screech was another incredible moment, and I love that the unique Kong-human interaction when he catches Audrey midair, it was extremely well illustrated and written. The final battle just looks amazing, and I love this battle so, so much, and that is why it is placed in my number four spot. Number three, Godzilla vs. Kong, round one, the Tasman Sea slash the ocean battle, Godzilla vs. Kong. And now we have entered the final three. In number three comes the ocean battle between Godzilla and Kong from Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, many who have seen my video review on Godzilla vs. Kong know I wasn't a fan of how Kong got saved four times in the battle. So why is it my third most liked monster vs. battle? Well, for one thing, the visuals. The visuals are a reminder that this is 2021. These visuals are beyond amazing. Not only does the CGI, like the detail on Godzilla's skin or Kong's fur, look spectacular, but the overall color palette is beyond astounding. It goes for this nice sunset daylight battle that is very, very well lit. The colors are really nice and the scene truly pops out at you. Kong and Godzilla look amazing. The underwater battles are a huge improvement over the ones we saw in Godzilla King of the Monsters. These look like the graphic novels come to life, basically. The underwater scenes are just so well lit. It may not be entirely accurate, but it is really, really well done in terms of just how clear it is to see that that kind of makes up for it. Everything in this battle is beautiful. Now, of course, there are always things that can be improved upon. That doesn't make it bad. It just means it's great, but it could be even greater. So that's the point of criticism. My only critiques for the ocean battle are that I wish Kong didn't get saved so often. Sure, it's Godzilla's domain and all, but Kong should have at least held his own way better than he did. Another critique of mine is that I wish Kong and Godzilla shared more hand-to-hand -hand combat than they actually did in the film. I would have loved to see Kong use more of his bites and his kicks. I wanted to see more punches and claw swipes be thrown. It should have been very, very close quarters and brutal. And another critique involves the actual animation and the overall, like, you know, physics of the scene. The animation seems very floaty and light at times. Like, I liked it for the most part. But scenes like Kong jumping from carrier to carrier were still, it felt extremely light. And I felt as if, like, these kinds of moments required a lot more physical weight to them. Other than that... I wish Godzilla didn't react so painfully to the jet fire as he did, but this fight, definitely one of the best in the series, in my opinion. Number 2, Godzilla and Kong vs Mechagodzilla. In at number 2 comes the Godzilla and Kong vs Mechagodzilla tag team battle. You can probably guess what number 1 is at this point, but man, this battle is just beyond amazing. I want to consider Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla and Godzilla and Kong vs Mechagodzilla as one battle because it all kind of happened around the same time. Now, at least for this list, I want to consider it, you know, all as one battle. But now, this is what we came to see. Godzilla and Kong, the two most powerful and influential character icons in all of cinema, finally teaming up to take down a threat together. Was it predictable? Sure. Did it make it any less powerful? Absolutely not. This moment was still very powerful. It was full of epic moments, astounding visuals, crazy sound design, and just stunning emotional moments. It was the very definition of epic and grand scale. Now, my criticisms are small, but mainly I wish that Kong didn't basically die from Godzilla and have his heartbeat fade. I was hoping for more hand-to-hand -hand combat from Mechagodzilla and Kong, and I wanted it to be clear that even a fresh Godzilla could lose to Mechagodzilla because he's just that powerful. And I wanted it to be clear that Kong and Godzilla both need each other in this universe. Without one, the other cannot survive. 
I liked seeing Godzilla actually struggle and lose because it showed us he isn't invincible. If a fresh Godzilla is deemed to suffer the same fate from a much longer battle, and if Kong actually rivaled Godzilla much more evenly, it would solidify to us, the audience, that Godzilla doesn't just have random buffs and plot armor, but that he is a king who earns his title, that he pushes through and overcomes the odds. But this battle gave me glimpses of that idea, and I would love to see it further explored in future installments. This is a phenomenal battle, and the look Kong and Godzilla give afterwards is just so confounding in that we expect them to go at it again, but the two monsters, and especially Godzilla, to our surprise, actually find a level of respect for the other opponent. That is what we should see. That is what I absolutely love about the final moments of this battle. And finally, in number one, Godzilla vs Kong, round two and three, the final Hong Kong battle. Or as Sayaka said, the Hong Kong War. This is it guys, this is the fight we have all been waiting for. For decades, fans have wanted to see this fight play out on screen, and boy did we get it. The heaviest version of Godzilla, and definitely one of the largest and most powerful, against an extremely powerful Kong. Like, I mean, come on. It's King Kong versus Godzilla. This is a match made up in heaven. The two are destined to fight each other, and son, it was incredible. Now, the only semi-negative critiques I have with this final battle is that, first of all, I wish Kong straight up didn't die to Godzilla, basically. I wish their battle was 5-10 to 10 minutes longer, and that Kong and Godzilla fought dangerously and brutally in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I wanted to see Kong lift, flip, and swing Godzilla, and I wanted to see him really give Godzilla a hard time in hand-to-hand. -hand. Show us his strength, and also show us that he's a vicious fighter with his massively sharp teeth being used in bite attacks, kick attacks, have him use his nails, anything. I didn't like that Kong depended on the axe a lot, and I do wish he had tanked the atomic breath to raise the stakes higher, but it was still an amazing battle, and I'm really glad to see how powerful Kong was. I love how brutal Godzilla was, and it was absolutely incredible seeing the two battle. I love the color palette the final battle has. The CGI is just, again, absolutely incredible. And while the two do sometimes feel a bit weightless, the fight is still epic, and that makes up for a lot of the weightlessness and lightness. And this is undoubtedly the best fight the MonsterVerse has to offer. It's brutal, it's epic in scale, the visuals are the best in the franchise for both characters, the music is staggering. This is the film you guys want to see. This is the film we as fans deserve. What a high note to potentially end the MonsterVerse on. And man, they need to keep going. We need to ask for more. Legendary. Give us more. And that is it, everybody. Do you agree with my list? Did I miss any of the fights? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed, and please subscribe for more. Until next time, this is King Kong 9100 signing out. Bye bye.